So in my last video, I showed you all the progression of the build of our barn and kind of where it's at now. And I wanted to take you through and show you some of the things that we've done that have made life a little bit easier and kind of how we've built them and what our plan is for them. So to start off, I'm gonna turn the camera around. I've got my panels up here that I'm gonna use for my lambing pens. I've got the five foot sections hung here and the eight foot sections hung on this side. And we have it so that the barn will be able to have 10 lambing pens on the perimeter. And then if we need to add additional, we can add some down the center of the barn as well. Um, what we did is we took two by fours and we cut a channel all the way down and that will allow us to place uh, the end of the pin in that channel and then we can construct the lambing pins all along the side of the barn. I'm going to show you how our pins are designed and how we set them up. So when lambing time comes, I can set my pins up as I need instead of setting all of them up um, and then it being wasted space when I don't have a U to put in the pin yet. So I'm going to show you how I set it up. I take my eight foot panel and it just slides into the channel like so. And then I have my five foot panel. And I'll be using the Premier hinge connectors. So I just have to use fire it on. I found that it works easy to just kind of sandwich them next to each other. And then once I've got my connector in place, then I can open up my door. And then that'll be a pin. And then I'll just continue to add each pin as I go. And then I can also, if I need to, remove these dividers. If I want to maybe integrate a couple U's and their lands together before allowing them out into general population. And then when I'm done, super easy. checking for matcha scores frequently to be able to set up a quick and easy pin so that I can pin my sheep and then go through them, check for matcha scores, deworm as necessary, trim feet, um, any type of management task that I need to do. I can use these pins to create various sized pins and it makes life a whole lot easier. So one of the things that you've probably noticed that we did is we installed the plywood as a kickboard all the way around on the interior. Um, I did that for a couple reasons. One, it's going to give um, me something to say, put my two by fours to anchor them into. The other really nice thing is I have a shelf. The shelf that the kick walls give me, um, it will be really nice because if I'm working in a lambing pen, I can easily set something off to the side and it's quick um, and easy to grab. So that makes it nice. It's just another spot to hold something in. Um, we've got the kick wall that goes all the way around here. And then the same on this side of the barn. <laughs> I don't know about you all, um, if you have sheep or goats or other animals that you're feeding, but I got really tired of riding my sheep every day when I went to feed. I would pour the feed, they'd be in and around my legs, I'd be tripping over them, they'd be stepping in their feeders, it was just a disaster. So one of my big things on my wish list for this barn was a fence line feeder under a roof. 
That way when the weather is cruddy outside and it's raining or snowing or icing, whatever, um, we're undercover, the food stays dry, they stay dry, I stay dry, everyone's a whole lot happier. So we made the fence line feeders that you see behind me and they were really simple to make. We had some extra fence boards um, that we had laying around from um, the walls that we did on the barn. Those are all oak fence boards. Um, so we utilized those and we basically created a fence line within the barn and then we just did a box style trough. <laughs> So this is the basic construction of my fence line feeders. We sunk posts. Um, we've got one, two, three, four posts that we sunk in here, just as if you were building a regular fence. Um, and then I had to figure out what height I wanted my openings at. Um, it took a little bit of thought, but um, I played around with it and I came to this height. I'll have to measure it to see exactly what height it is at. Um, and we place that board and then you can kind of see here on the side it's got another fence board that comes out here hey honey honey wants to help and then we've got two fence boards high on the back to keep things from spilling out um, and then we've got in caps and i also capped it off in the middle at the post so that there wouldn't be feed that would just sit there that they would try to reach around to get to and then that allows me to have all my feed in here. They can easily get to it. It stays nice and dry. It's easy to clean out. Um, my scoop I found fits in here really nice. So if I need to scrape it out, 
um, to clean it, I can easily do that. And then we did have, um, we made the walkthrough gate as well. And I wanted that so that um, when I'm working in back here in my aisle, I can walk through and do what I need to do. Um, so we just did it in the same style um, and got just a little simple latch. And I decided since it was part of um, the whole feed system, I would just place my uh, mineral, my loose mineral here, as well as uh, my sodium bicarb, uh, the baking soda as well. So I can easily check levels as I'm feeding and top it off as needed. Um, but that's kind of our feeder system and what we went with. I've been really happy with it so far, and I think it's going to serve us really, really well. Hi, Emerald. Hi, Splash. How many babies do you have that you're cooking? Huh? You are getting wide. You are a wide girl. You're getting wide too. Hi, Ara. Hi, honey. Hi, sweet girl. Hi, my girls. This is Olive. She's a black badger. Hi, Olive. Hi, sweet girl. I want to show you some of these girls. So we are about uh, 22 days away from the first possible lambing date. Um, lambing could potentially begin uh, February 21st. So we are um, about 22 days out and some of these girls are getting rather large. Look at this. She looks like she ate a football and it went sideways. So this is Emerald, and I've got Emerald, and then her mom, Jasmine, who's right here. Jasmine gave us quintuplets last year, and I held back two of um, the ewe lambs from those quintuplets. Um, that line tends to be a little bit of overachievers. And then Jasmine's other daughter here is Magnolia and then this little one that keeps following me around this is one of the quintuplets um, that Jasmine had last year and she's a super sweet girl um, so these are some of some of our fin sheep some of our flock and one very naughty goat who decides to always come in the sheep barn to eat Apparently she's too good to eat with her goat friends. So one thing we were not anticipating when we decided to use fence boards for our walls was how much they would shrink. Um, you can see throughout the barn there are gaps between every board. I was hoping for it to be board on board flush to keep out any drafts. That was also kind of what prompted me to say, hey, let's put up these kickboards. Um, it's just sheets of plywood and that'll keep drafts off at the sheep's level. Um, we're kind of undecided right now as to how we're gonna finish it off. Um, we're not gonna paint the barn until the spring. I'm thinking that what we're gonna end up doing is we are gonna do like a board and batten um, and have the strips of wood to cover the uh, cracks in between the boards. Um, but I kind of want to live with it first before we invest in the wood to do that with. Um, I may end up liking the ventilation. So far, it doesn't rain inside the barn and things like that when, when it rains outside through the cracks. So um, we're just going to kind of live with it and see what we think. Last but not least, we are also going to expand on the outside, um, the left and the right side, as well as the front. So off the side, we're gonna extend out an overhang here. It'll probably be about 12 feet. Um, and we are gonna enclose this sidewall here. And on the back, we're gonna have it to be where there'll be a half wall and then there'll be a slider door. So if I slide that door closed, then that overhang area will be closed off in the back 
and then up the side and open in front since all of our prevailing weather comes from the back. Um, and then if I want to ventilate it in the summer, have it nice and cool, I can just slide that door open and then it'll just be a little half wall um, there and then the side will be enclosed. And then on this side of the barn, we're going to do the same with an overhang, but it will not be enclosed. Um, this is a driveway that comes all the way down from our road, and that way um, I'll be able to pull the car in under the overhang and get out um, under cover if it's really nasty and things like that. We could park a tractor under it if we needed to. It'll just be really nice and versatile. And then off the front, we are gonna have an A-frame uh, overhang and that'll just create an, another nice shady area that they can lay in that'll have lots of nice ventilation um, in the summertime and it'll keep some of the rain and things like that out of the front of the barn um, so that my doors can stay open. And then around the outside, we're gonna have um, a little dry lot and we'll probably do something like a stone um, in that and that way they can be up out of the muck when we've got really nasty rainy weather. I can lock them up in the dry lot with access to the barn at night, things like that. 